The movie opens with a beautiful sight of a flower-covered field while a woman is walking through it, her hands caressing the petals of the flowers. A young boy and an older man run toward her, the three falling onto the field. In the background, Zara talks about how she had brothers and a family, but had not met her sisters in arms yet, explaining how much the war would change them. Since the attack on Mosul, soldiers have been watching over their village, but they were not prepared for what was coming. After returning home, Zara is surprised to find a new paint on her bed, a gift from her elderly father. Rushing toward him, she hugs him and thanks him for the present. One afternoon, Zara is outside painting when a U-boy begins to scream that soldiers have arrived at the village. Suddenly, the place is swarmed by armed soldiers who begin to fire their guns, frightening the villagers. The men then begin to drag the men and women of the community out of their houses and onto the streets, making them give up all their wealth. After they separate the men and women, they execute the elderly men, forcing Zara to watch as her father is executed. After the horrible sight, Zara screams as she cries, devastated by the loss. The women are taken to the soldiers' camp where some of them are picked to be sold, including Zara. The scene changes, and we see two men talking in the middle of nowhere, when suddenly one of the men is hit on the head by a sniper. Women soldiers then swarm the place, and the remaining man begs the women to allow him to be killed by a man, but the soldiers refuse, shooting him right in the head. After their successful mission, the women arrived at a large field where other women were training to be soldiers. Watching from the edge are the coalition agent and one of the commanders who are approached by a journalist who is in interested in writing about the women. When he asks them some questions, the two men explain that the enemy fears the women soldiers as they think they will not be able to go to heaven if they're killed by one. When the journalists ask them what they plan to do after the war, the second commander tells him that they dream of creating a peaceful Kurdistan that respects every culture and religion. Later, comrade Rhoda joins her team for breakfast, hungry after their long mission. While they compliment what a great job the kitchen did that morning, the commander arrives and appreciates the work they did at the check Point. Back in the warlord camp, Zara is placed amongst many other girls who are waiting to be sold. As soon as the auction starts, a British man who a formidable reputation arrives and is quickly allowed inside for his reputation as Lieutenant Abu Mariam the aggressive religious leader. After taking a look around, the man notices the beautiful Zara and decides to purchase her. While she is being dragged out, Zara sends her younger brother and screams for the man to buy him as well, promising she would do anything but the British man refuses, slapping her face and carrying her away. The man known as El Britanni takes Zara to his house and puts her in the spare room despite his wife's disapproval. Going into the other room, his wife and her brother, who was forced into accompanying El Britanni, have a heated argument where jealously asks, why he would like this to happen, but El Tunsi explains that there was nothing he could do. After Nadia serves the men their dinners, El Britton goes into the room where he had locked Zara and forces himself on her while his wife and brother-in-law listen to what is happening in the other room with dread. Back in the women's campsite, one of the female commanders is upset that Colonel Kurd didn't tell them they were receiving new recruits. Even though she has reservations about the constant young women who have been joining their cause, she goes out to greet them. After giving the two new girls a warm welcome, the commander explains the female revolution goal and warns them that they cannot have their phones or indulge in any type of sexual activity as they are there to fight. After they are shown to their beds, the girls meet the rest of their bunk buddies and become well acquainted with the workings of the place. The following day, the soldiers wake up early to undergo their usual training. After several hours of hard work, the woman gathered around to hear stories from the older soldier. As they listen, the woman explains that when Mesopotamia was not a divided country and everyone respected the mother goddess, it was with the arrival of monotheism and capitalism that the system of male domination began to impose its law. The commander tells them that they will not suffer through it any longer and tells them they will be victorious. As the day goes by, training becomes easier to undergo for the newer recruits, and they begin to keep up with their sister's arm, who had been serving for years. One afternoon, a few of the veterans and new recruits go out for a long hike as part of the training. After a long journey, the group stops to make camp for the night, and new recruit Kenza and the American sniper have a heated argument about the situation in in Iraq, which the sniper finds offensive, aggravating the argument about which religion was right. At the small town, Al Britton had taken her. Zara woke up on the small bed, her body feeling the pain of what the man had done to her the previous day. After opening the small door and taking a few deep breaths, Zara begins to knock loudly on the locked door, beginning to use the bathroom but no one answers. Several hours later, Nadia dresses Zara in her conservative abaya and takes her out to watch an execution, warning her about escaping. After arriving at the town square, Nadia 
Nadia begins filming the execution, giving Zara a few minutes to escape, but she is quickly apprehended by the female guards. Just before she is taken away, Zara uses the few seconds of chaos to grab a small phone left on the table. After returning home, Nadia asks her husband, El Breton, to punish Zara, but he slaps his wife, telling her that she should have never taken her out in the first place. When she is forced back into her room, Zara quickly uses the phone to call her uncle, who promises to help her, but asks her to escape from the house first, telling her he cannot do anything until she calls him from hiding. That night, Zara makes their dinner and adds several sleeping pills to the soup. When El Breton appreciates Zara's cooking more than his wife's, Nadia leaves the dining table, refusing to eat. That night, when the men are fast asleep from the medication, Zara slowly sneaks out of the house, fearful that she will be apprehended. Zara then quickly calls her uncle, who manages to pay a smuggler to find her in the dead of night, and picks her up in his car. After several hours of driving, the smuggler suddenly stops and points at a hill in a far distance and tells her that she would be able to find the resistance there, mentioning that he couldn't drop her off as she was already too late and the roads would be dangerous since it was already morning. After traveling for several hours on foot, Zara joins other survivors, but they are ambushed by El Britton and his men. Just as they thought all hope was lost, the resistance fighters arrive and retaliate, opening fire against the terrorists attacking the survivors. Although the women manage to take out one of El Britton's cars and kill most of his men, they are shocked when they see a suicide car heading their way. After several attempts to stop the car in its tracks, they manage to destroy it by using a missile just in time before it could cause more damage. Once the survivors are rescued, they are taken to the refugee camp, where Zara is reunited with her brother and mother. That night, the group celebrates their victory with the survivors as they sing and dance throughout the night. The following morning, Zara leaves her brother a letter telling him to take care of their mother and explains she is going to avenge their father and find their younger brother by joining the resistance army. On their way to the camp, Zara is introduced to the rest of the soldiers who tell her their code names. On their way there, they find a small pool and decide to indulge in swimming and playing in the water. After a well-deserved sock, the women continue their journey and come across a cemetery that was destroyed by the jihadists which belonged to Zara's people. In a different camp, Zara's youngest brother, along with several other young boys, are being brainwashed into joining the jihadist army by being told their parents have angered God, training them into being part of the army. After spending the day attempting to fix as many tombstones as they can, the women gather around a fire so their new recruits can choose their battle names. After the ritual, the commander gives them all one bullet and tells them to keep on them at all times to keep them from falling into the enemy's hands. The following day, the group of resistance fighters enter a nearby village to free it from the jihadists and are forced to bomb it. After several attacks rain down on the village, the woman walks through the streets hoping to find the rest of the terrorists. After an argument breaks out between the commander and mother son who leaves the group to save a crying child, Lady Kurta follows her but is ambushed by the arriving terrorists. Having been trapped by the enemy soldiers, Lady Kurta uses her radio to inform her sisters about what happened and uses the last of her bombs to kill herself as well as her enemies. Devastated by the loss, the resistance soldiers charge out, screaming and firing at the remaining terrorists. After several coordinated attacks, the women manage to take out most of the soldiers and take El Britanni hostage to make him talk as if he were an officer. When they arrive at their camp, the women hold a vigil for their fallen friend. Once the ceremony is over, they begin to question El Britanni, who reveals that he knows where his leader is going to be, mentioning that they were getting new slaves which Abu Mariam would personally pick out, antagonizing Zara by telling her her brother would be there. When everyone had dispersed, Zara went to speak to El Britanni, who continued to antagonize her brother and the way he had treated her when she was under his rule. Unable to control herself, Zara charges at the man and stabs him multiple times, killing him before anyone has the chance to stop her. Having already received received the information they needed, the woman came up with a plan to attack Abu Mariam while he was still in the nearby town. Dressing up like slaves, the women are presented to the warlord, dressing in full abayas. Before the man could expect anything, the women reveal themselves and begin shooting down his soldiers. During the fight, Kenza is severely hurt while trying to protect Zara, but pushes her forward to find her brother. While searching for her younger brother, Zara is shocked to see him wearing a suicide vest, while Abu Mariam urges him to push the trigger so he can escape. While the resistance fighters chase after after the terrorist leader, Zara slowly tries to calm her brother down, who seems to be confused and frightened. Singing the song their mother used to sing to them, Zara slowly walks over to her brother, who finally cries out for her. Removing the vest from his shoulders, the two embrace, Zara holding her brother close to her chest. After they manage to kill the evil terrorist leader, the resistance leader frees all the captured women. Although she fights for several moments, Kenza dies from her fetal wound, while Yael holds her friend in her arms. That afternoon, the group celebrates their well-deserved 
victory as they were able to take out their most feared enemy. Seeing that Yael was suffering from the loss, Zara took her aside and showed her a drawing she had made of Kenza so she could be remembered there forever. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.